In Madison, Wisconsin, police say a Molotov cocktail thrown into the headquarters of an anti-abortion group, vandalized with a warning spray-painted on a wall. If abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. We did this story earlier this week. Uh, over the weekend, there was a, a pro-life clinic uh, up in Madison, Wisconsin that was uh, apparently attacked by an arsonist with Molotov cocktails. And it didn't do as much damage as it could have because one of those cocktails didn't ignite the way that they wanted it to. But there was damage, there was graffiti written about uh, from what would appear to be uh, pro-choice activists. So. Um, the update here is a pro a pro choice group has claimed responsibility for that attack. Kind of odd, but they did. So let's look at the details of that. Um, the group did this with no remorse and put toward a statement with some of these quotes here. So this is the statement said from that group. This is only a warning. We demand the disbanding of all anti-choice establishments, fake clinics, and violent anti-choice groups within the next 30 days. This is not a mere difference of opinion as some have framed it. We are literally fighting for our lives. We will not sit still or we are killed and forced into servitude. We have run thin on patience and mercy for those who seek to strip us of what little autonomy we have left. As you continue to bomb clinics and assassinate doctors with impunity, so too shall we adopt increasingly extreme tactics to maintain freedom over our own bodies. Next time the infrastructure of the enslavers will not survive is what the group says. Medical imperialism will not face a passive enemy. Wisconsin is not is the first flashpoint, we are, but we are all over the US and we will issue no further warnings. So from that, the Madison Police Department said that it was aware of the group claiming responsibility for the arson at the Wisconsin Family Action and are working with federal partners to determine the veracity of that claim. So they have to at least confirm that because you know anybody could throw up a claim, but I'm willing to believe it. It urged anyone with relevant information to make contact saying we take all information and tips related to this case seriously and we're working to vet each and every one. So um, first thoughts on this, at least for me and also I'll get to you guys. Um, as this comes forward, because we talked about it and some people doubted whether or not it was a real claim because based off of the nice uh, cursive handwriting and the lack of a Molotov cocktail blowing up sufficiently. And also the anarchy sign not looking very anarchist. Um, people thought it was potentially a self act on themselves, but there's a group that has taken responsibility. And if that's the case, uh, I'll be the first to say, uh, don't do that. It's exactly what Republicans are looking for. And I get the anger, I get the frustration, I get the fact that we're good. This is what Republicans don't say. How about the hundreds to thousands of clinics and doctors that have been attacked? Women going to take care of their own health needs and they get harassed and yelled at and assaulted and attacked and followed and protested. These things happen and they happen in a much larger scale. So when an attack like this happens, it gives this whole Joe Manchin like, oh, everybody's doing the same type of thing argument. Let's not give them that. Uh, first, I'm gonna get your thoughts on that part, uh, uh, Waz. Then we'll get to the irony of these Republicans responding to it. Yeah, I would hope that this isn't the case, um, that this isn't true. And I would encourage people to understand that only one side basically has a monopoly on violence. Um, the thing is, like when we become violent, you know, when people after a bunch of cops just start indiscriminately killing some black people and people throw chairs through a marshals and steal some underwear. Uh, you know, nice liberals get up right. in arms, to be honest. Yeah. Like people that would ostensibly be on our side start crying about, you know, for the glass and the doors that get broken. They begin to weep for that. So it's it's just bad tactics, it's bad politics because the people who, you know, allegedly support us, like these they're weak, you know, like they're they're very kind of reactionary themselves and uh they don't they don't have the stomach for this kind of thing. So that's what I would say is one and just you don't want to go to prison for this, man. Yeah. You don't want to go to jail for this. So so I, I think there's better ways to attack the, the tyranny of these crazy right wingers than bombing stuff and burning stuff to the ground. Well, also because you'll get people like Elise Stefanik, who then came out and had a, a little press gaggle and had her supporters and fellow colleagues behind her. And of course, it was look at those libs and all their dangerous activities. Look how pure and innocent us Republicans are with no irony, watch. What makes Republicans consistent is we speak out against violent acts no matter who commits them. What makes the Democrats inconsistent is that they speak out only in moments when they believe, uh, only in certain moments. So for example, on January 6th, we spoke out against the violence on January 6th as we did throughout the entire summer with BLM protests. It is a disgrace that they have not spoken out against the heinous attacks on the pro-life organization in Wisconsin. 
we're gonna skip graphic three there, but I did want to point out that her colleague behind her was leaning over like, is she really saying this? Like, wait, I mean, she said she might say it, but I thought it was a joke. He was leaning like, for real? Because we're definitely not that. Um, in case you need a proof of how how they are absolutely that, let's jump again to a, a SOT4 start here, you guys, because she did say, we spoke out against violence on January 6th, yet those Democrats never speak out against violence. We spoke out against violence on January 6th. Let's listen. The fact of the matter is, this didn't seem as an, like an armed insurrection to me. I mean, armed, when you think it here of armed, don't you think of firearms? Mm -hmm. Here's the here's questions I would have liked to ask. How many firearms were confiscated? How many shots were fired? <laughs> Sounds like Ron Johnson doesn't uh, isn't speaking against January sixth. Again, what? You know, by and large, it was, it was all it was peaceful protests, except for you know there were there were a number of people, basically agitators, that uh, whipped the crowd and and breached the Capitol. And uh, you know th that's really the truth of what's happening here. We did not speak. We did speak out against January sixth, Ted Cruz. On January 6th of 2021, you had tens of thousands of people peacefully protesting, and yet the corporate media and Democrats slander them with the, the made up term insurrectionist. Elise Stefanik said, We spoke out against January 6th violence. Yesterday, I think it is a mistake for Republicans to repeat the political propaganda of Democrats and the corporate media. This lady named Elise Stefanik said that Republicans spoke out against January 6th violence. Watching the TV footage of those who entered the Capitol and walked through Statuary Hall showed people in an orderly fashion staying between the stanchions and ropes taking videos and pictures. You know, if you didn't know the TV footage was a video from January the 6th, you would actually think it was a normal tourist visit. Okay, fine. That's just every other Republican. But at least Stefanik didn't speak out against January 6th violence, or she didn't downplay it, did she? The American people deserve to know the truth that Nancy Pelosi bears responsibility as Speaker of the House for the tragedy that occurred on January 6th. The reality doesn't have to exist. They just have to create it and their followers will listen. We'll wonder if we're gonna listen to them. That's been the entire narrative was. I'm not gonna belabor it because I feel like it's pretty much set in stone there. I mean, look, if you watch that speech, that lady doesn't believe a word of what's coming out of her own mouth. Like I don't I don't see how, and I don't think that their voters actually care if they're consistent or not. That's not a thing that voters give a damn about. Voters care when they're on their side about the things that they care about. So like they know they can come up there and just lie and publicly pretend that they've been admonished in the acts of extremist people on the right wing. It's just a lie, but their voters don't actually care that they lie or not. It's a shame, I wish they would because that's where we got ourselves in this position now. And those same voters, their, their rights will be taken away. They're taking away everyone's rights. These aren't partisan rights being taken away. These are everyone's rights being taken away.